start with Jack. Uh, I presume today you would have been going through your review with the, the team from the, the Champions Cup final on, on Saturday. What were the what were the main things that kind of stuck out, um, or the main issues that had to be addressed? Um, I think probably the the the, the, the two uh, things that pop out the most was probably uh, discipline in the sense of uh, conceding turnovers. Uh, I uh, we just conceded our discipline with ball in hand and continuity wasn't good enough. Uh, and then the second one uh, that stood out was uh, um, the amount a breakdown. I I felt we we didn't or oh, not I we as a group that reviewed felt that we just didn't get uh, enough quick ball uh, so and uh, fair play to Toulouse there they they really managed to to slow our ball down that, that, that's the two two things um, and obviously the third one, one we didn't win the game yeah that, that that's the three things yeah yeah that's the, that's the important one um there have been people who've said in the, the last couple of months that with such a big focus on the defence in recent months that Leinster's attack hasn't looked as as sharp or as uh, inventive maybe as, as it used to. What would you say to, to people who suggest that? Um, uh, to be to be fair, I, I don't know uh, how how the structure. Let, let's let's start with a week. Uh, 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 how a week will flow. I don't know how it flowed last year, but when I got in here, I, su I suppose when I got here in December, it flew. It, the, the flow of the week was exactly the same as what it was last year. Uh, so I, I don't know if Goody and Liu changed anything from when Stu left, uh, let's say from the start of the season till, till I got here in December. I don't know if the flow changed. Do you understand what I mean by that? Yeah. But since when I got here, um, I, I, I thought there was two ways of doing it. You can come in and say, listen, uh, I prefer the week to flow like this because it worked uh, when, we, when I was with the spring box. This is how the week flow went in terms of sessions, uh, uh, kicking game, defense, attack. Uh, or I just slot in with how the flow went uh, within Leinster, so and uh, I chose to go that route, you know, because I always know how it worked with the box and the previous teams that I was involved in. Uh, but but it was I thought to change it mid season uh, I, I, for me for 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 the whole team to change for one new guy coming in, I, it just didn't make sense. So literally, I, I came into to the the workflow of the week. And they, the, the lads would just say, listen, this is normally where we have a block for defense uh, and they, the, the, the defense that we, sp that we addressed here was defense from scrums or defense from lineouts or defense from kick chase or general defense or uh, defense in pick and go. So, so the, the lads literally just gave me slots of where they would normally address defense and I just went into that. So uh, from from my understanding, since I got here, there wasn't uh, there wasn't. Listen, okay, we need more time on defense. We just I just literally slot in as as they flew when I got here. Like I said, I don't know if there was a change in flow uh, before I came from 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 uh, when Stewart left and and Goody and Liu and and the lads took over, but. Uh, I just literally slot in with the program as it was. Um, moving on then to, to this week and Connacht on, on Friday night. Obviously, um, it is indeed Leinster's hands whether or not you finish first, second, third or fourth. Um, and the fact that you're up first this weekend, is that just an opportunity to, to get as good a win as possible on the board and hope that that can put a bit of pressure on the, the other teams then over the weekend? Yeah, I, d I don't think, uh, I, 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 sorry, I, I missed the first part, but I don't think it's in our hands. Uh, I, I think we are reliant on, on the results to finish oh, no, first or no, second. Sorry, I was, sorry, I was saying it, it's not in your hands. Yeah, yeah, it's not in our hands. Yeah, yeah 100%. Yeah. So, yeah, for us, it's, I think the big thing this week is literally focusing on us, uh, making sure uh, that, yeah, that, I, I mean, and, and I'll say that with all the respect uh, to Connect and our position, I mean, obviously, you, you, you have to, have a good understanding of how they operate and how they work, but I think the main thing for us is just to make sure that that we we do as much as we can, and then and then we literally have to sit back and see 
uh, how things play out. I think I think that we we definitely um, uh, we we will have a home quarter final. Uh, it's just then then uh, do we have a, a home semi or uh, but that will depend, like you rightly say, on other results. And just finally, then for me, um, Hugo Keenan is departing to go play with the sevens for a, a short little while. Uh, if Leinster do get to potentially to a, a semi-final or a final of the, the URC, do you expect him to be available for Leinster at that stage? I, I, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, in my mind, I don't think so. Uh, but like like I say, I, I, I'm literally thumb-sucking uh, Liu and... Uh, and Guy will probably know more the detail of, of that that contract negotiation with the with with the national body. Uh, but my understanding would be that he's he won't be available. Uh, yeah, that, that that's my understanding. Okay, thanks, Jeff, and best of luck this week. Thank you. Hi, Jeff. Ashton here from Off the Ball. How's things? Yeah, good, and you? Good, thank you. Hard luck with the weekend. A brilliant game of rugby, but no doubt it was a hard one to take for Leinster. And I know it's hard to, to look back now, but do you feel that maybe Leinster should have kicked more of their penalties to the post in order to get three points rather than going for tries? Or how do you see on that now? Yeah, I think <clears throat> that, um, yeah, there's certainly a lot of talk around that. And uh, if, you, if you look at it, I, 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 somewhere I heard nine kickable penalties, but I think we, we're talking about four four kickable penalties, uh, two in the first half and two in the second half. Uh, and I would say um, two of those four was probably on the 15 meter. Um, all the others that were between the two 15 meters, if I can put it like that, uh, the, the lads went for pole. So I, I guess it's probably a conversation between the kicker and the captain, you know, three of, I think uh, two, two was like, I would say one was on the 15. Uh, the other one was probably 10 from touch and the other two was on the 5 meter. So uh, that, that always boils down to the momentum, where the team feel they are, or do we have momentum, don't we have momentum, is the, the kicker feeling uh, confident. And, and when I say confident, I mean the kickers have a pretty good idea what their kicking percentage is between the two 15s, what their percentage is from the 15 to the 5 and what their percentage would be from the 5 to the touchline. So they have a very good idea during the season and obviously we do as well. Uh, uh, what their what their success rate is currently, uh, uh, um, and and like I say, that, that that is a decision that they make they they make on the on the field, and you have to trust them with that. So uh, and, uh, on that, Ashling, I think in hindsight, it always makes perfect science, and nothing that that I would say yeah would would be right because obviously you know the outcome, you know that. Our decisions that we took didn't didn't uh, result in points. So so obviously now in hindsight you look yeah listen it didn't work so it was the wrong decision. But I but I I can also go back and say too I remember uh, reading two years ago when when. Uh, when Leinster played in the final against La Rochelle and we, we took the kickable penalties, you know, and, um, and, and then end up losing. Uh, the team was criticized for not being more adventurous. And, and again, uh, in, in hindsight, because you lost the game, that was the wrong decision to take points. You should have been more aggressive. But you don't know that, you know. Uh, um, so if we did take the kicks for poles uh, and we missed it uh, would it then be listen you should have gone for the touch I, I, it at the end of the day ashling it boils boils down to the players must make a decision on the pitch and if that if they if they score a try from that uh, it was the right decision it's pr pr pretty much outcome based if i can put it like that uh, if they if they don't score with a mall, uh, it was the wrong decision. If they go for poles and he misses the kick at goal, he should have gone for touch. I, I guess that's what a hindsight is, uh, and that's why nothing that I would say now would, would uh, it would be it was the wrong decision uh, because the outcome was negative. Yeah, no, totally. And for the players now, it's a very short period of time where they can pick themselves back up. And after losing three finals in a row, is there a worry at all that there is like a psychological block or anything like that with closing out games in big finals? 
Uh, I don't know, because I wasn't part of the others. Uh, I'm only part of this one. And uh, the, I, think, I think the main thing is, is probably to, to uh, although there will always be emotions involved, I think the main thing is to try and detach emotion as much as possible and look as, as objective uh, to, uh, to the game as possible, you know, and, and, and try and get emotions out of the way. Uh, and, and like I said uh, in, in, in the first question that I got asked, I think if you take all the motions out of the way, uh, there was two areas, three areas that, that we probably didn't tick the box. And the first and most important one is that you win the game. No, we didn't. Then second of all, uh, did we have uh, good discipline with ball in hand? No, we conceded too many turnovers. And thirdly, uh, did we have good continuity on attack? Uh, and when I talk about continuity, I talk about our breakdown and making sure that we get good quick rucks. No, we didn't do that. And that's the objective side of things, you know. Uh, so if you want to uh, bar that, I think uh, defensively there was... There was good parity between the two teams. I thought if you look at our, at our attack in general and how we carried ball, getting over the advantage line, creating line breaks, uh, creating front foot ball, uh, meters per carry. Uh, if you look at that statistics, probably we were good in that department. If you look at the set piece and you look at our attacking scrums, uh, getting penalties out of it, uh, we, that's probably another. So, so I think... One must try, long story, uh, long answer for a short point. Uh, I think one must look as objective as possible to it. And, and like I said, uh, if you look at that, I can't say if there's a, there's a mental block. In my mind, no, why would there be? They, you lost the game, yes, it's a final, but uh, it's like any game that you lose. You, you've got to try and cut the emotions of it and, and look at it from an objective point of view and, and find solutions. And for you, when you said there that to put the emotions out as a coach, how do you find that? Is it an easier, hard thing to do when you're trying to park a, an upset like that and move on to the next thing? No, for me it's easy. I just I just look objectively uh, at it. You know, there will be a lot of white noise and there will be a lot of there will be a lot of talk around it. And but but um, the main thing is you got to stay in the reality. You know, there will be there will be a lot of like I said, a lot of white noise and a lot of talk and you should have done that, should have done this. But at the end of the day, you've got to cut all that white noise off. Look at the game in the, in the bare, barest of way that you can uh, and look at it as objectively as you can. And, and then you must say, OK, listen, what, what, what was good, what was bad and what do we need to fix? And, and it's literally as emotionless as that. Thanks so much. Best of luck this weekend. Thank you. William. Yeah, William, go ahead if you have a question. You're on mute there, William. Sorry about that, Jack. Uh, William Davis, the goalie here. Uh, just commiserations on, on, on Saturday. I'm just wondering. Do you have to approach getting the side ready to play this game slightly differently now with what happened on Saturday? Uh, especially if you're bringing in players who weren't involved on Saturday. Uh, yeah, I think I think the, the uh, William the, the the thing is we was it, it's no uh, no you must take the learnings. <clears throat> They must take the, the the players who weren't involved must take the learnings uh, out of this game and uh, and and uh, yeah they were part of the review as much as the team that played because I think there is always lessons uh, you 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 get your biggest uh, lessons out of out of losses so uh, because obviously Toulouse is a very good side so it was a privilege to test ourselves against them against one of the, well they probably. If you look at, at where we finished, they they the best club team in the European competition and we're the, currently the second best club team in the European competition. So it was awesome for us to 
to measure ourselves and, and, and all the aspects of the game against them. And, and obviously, there's certain areas that we, we had good growth and good momentum, and then there was a couple of areas where we didn't have that, you know, and we, we need to fix that going into Connect. And that's literally how laser focus we must be. Listen, fix the stuff that we, we didn't get right and try doing that by keeping the other, the stuff that was uh, to our satisfaction and that we felt we were, we were good at. We must keep those standards there, but, but fix the other ones. And I suppose it, it's part of it as well that you want to win. Obviously, the position of the table can be changed a little bit for you, but it can also clear everybody's head if you can get back to a winning situation. Yeah, no, definitely, especially looking at the URC, and uh, we're fortunate that we. We, we, we missed out on a, we played in a final of one competition and obviously didn't, couldn't get it over the line, but we are fortunate that we still have another competition uh, and a trophy to go for, you know. So, so um, yeah, it's, it's moving on to the next, uh, we've got four big weeks left um, and uh, we must make sure, I mean, if you go into the knockouts, of uh, this other competition uh, or the URC competition in the quarters, the semis and, and the finals. If you go into knockout rugby, you always want to go in preferably with momentum. And that's why it will, be, it will be awesome for us if we can build momentum going into those knockouts. Um, yeah, so that's, it's important for us to turn the corner as quickly as possible uh, and go with momentum into uh, the next game, uh, into the knockout. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, anyone else with a question for Jack? Okay, Jack, I'm just ask one question for Leinster TV, if you don't mind. Um, it's our last game in the RDS before the redevelopment. Since you've come in December, how have you found the atmosphere and the Leinster support? Now, yes, the Leinster support has been phenomenal. I mean, uh, that's probably the thing that hurts. If I say we look at it unemotionally uh, as possible, uh, the, the game on Saturday, I mean, that's the emotional part. That probably hurts the most is the, the the loyalty of the fan and the and the effort that the fan goes through, uh, and that we couldn't uh, enlighten the their weekend and 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 enlighten their year, you know, and make them happy. I think that's the emotional part. That's the part that probably eats you alive inside and will eat you alive for for some time. Uh, uh, but from a clinical rugby point of view, get clarity. No emotion. This is what we need to fix. Let's move on. But but the fact that you you drop drop the fans and and you couldn't make make give them give them some happiness, you know, is, is the thing that will probably eat you alive. Especially the fan base that we have and how loyal they are and how much they support us through thick and thin. So yeah, that's the tough part. So and that's why it's important for us this weekend. That's why what I meant when I said it's about us. We've got a couple of players that are finishing up with Leinster, um, and and uh, it will be and and we're obviously finishing off with RDS for a while. So it's important for us to to make sure that 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 we finish on high in terms of that. So there's a lot for us from an emotional point of view to play for this weekend. 